Hey, what's up guys? How you guys doing? This is Ray. A couple of weeks ago, made a video on a service called Dropload. If you wanted to send me a file, you use that service. If I wanted to send you a file, I'll use Dropload. Works pretty good, but you have a couple of limitations. The free edition, it's about two gigs. But if you get one gig free after you um, give a couple of invites, but then after that, you have to pay. So what I'm gonna show you is how to create an FTP server. You run it from your computer. And if you wanna invite somebody, they can download files from you be somewhere else and your computer's on and you could just log in from another computer. Sometimes I have people sending me OMF files, just big sessions. It doesn't even have to be with music, it could just be anything else, photos, whatever. So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna go to www.filezilla-project.org. If you know somebody with the FTP server, you're gonna download FileZilla client. If you're gonna open the server, you're gonna download FileZilla server. I recommend just downloading both of them. So let me minimize the browser. I already installed the client. Let me install the server. Over here, leave it at default. It's gonna say connect to server. You can see server address, port, and administration. You could put a password, it's really up to you. I'm gonna just leave it blank. Always connect to the server, select okay. All right, so here we go. It's logged in, the server's open. There's one thing you have to do. You're gonna have to go to your computer Whatever drive you're going to use, my case, I'm using the C drive. I created a folder called FTP. Over here, I have MP3 and OMF. You can create whatever you want. You don't even have to create subfolders. I like to be organized. You can create a folder of Pro 2 sessions, pictures, it's all up to you. We're going to need to set a user. Now, if it's only you that's going to be logging in from outside of the network, so then you can create your own name. Now, if you're going to invite a friend, you create his name. Let me just show you. Over here, we're going to select users. Over here, you see users. You can select add. It's only going to be me right now, so Ray. Okay. You're going to enable the password. Very important you create a password. You don't want anybody logging into your account, having access to your personal files. Now, the next step, over here in add, you're going to have to select that folder that we created, FTP. So, find the folder. Select it, select OK. Every user can have different privileges. Of course, it's me. So I'm gonna select write, delete, create, delete, OK. And just select OK. And that's it, you're done. Now the next thing, you're gonna have to go to edit, settings. Now this is very, very important. Over here, listen on these ports. 21 is the default port, I don't really like to use those ports. So you know what, let me create one, 7898. It's gonna be the port that I create, 7898. Now over here, you're gonna see passive mode. It's very important you select this. Sometimes the FTP server does not work. Now here's what I'm gonna do. Select notepad, 7898. That's the port. Over here, I'm gonna select 7899. 7899. Okay. All right, so that's it, we're done. You could minimize it. Now, if, if you wanted to, you can open the client. Let's see if it works. I know the internal IP, which is 192.168.1.108. Easy way you can find out, just open command prompt, type in IP config, 192.168.1.109, which I know it's 108. I made the computer use a static IP. I'm gonna get into that in a minute. The name, Ray password and of course the port which was 7898 quick connect and guess what it works this is inside of the network of course it's going to work it's behind the router it's working now if you want to connect outside of the router let me show you guys what you have to do so i'm going to close this you can open your web browser 
If you have a router, you're going to have to log into your router. Now again, you're going to go to your command prompt. IP config, well actually, IP config all. You're going to look for that default gateway. Right here, the default gateway, 192.168.1.3. Usually would be 192.168.1.1, but I changed it to .3. It's just me. So you're gonna type that in here. You're gonna go to 192.168.1.3. It's gonna ask you for username and password. Now, some routers require the user's name. I'm using a Linksys, so I'm just tab. It doesn't really need the name. For the four, it's usually admin or administrator, but I changed that, enter my password. Here we go. We're gonna go ahead and go to applications and gaming. I already created one, FTP 7898, both 192.168.1, one, that 108. The network automatically, well, the router assigns an IP to your computer. In this case, it's 108. So now we created passive. Let me just call that passive. I believe it was. 7899, 7899, 108, you're gonna wanna enable. Pretty cool. Before I go into the next step, I wanna show you guys how to make static IP. Now if you have more than one computer and you guys shut them off and then we turn them on sometimes, it could change the IP address, the internal IP address. So what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to go to control panel. You're going to want to go to network over here, local area connection. And you're going to want to go to properties. Scroll down. Internet protocol properties. I'm using Windows 7. So if some of you guys are using XP, let me know. I'll easily make a video on how to do this. It's really easy. Automatically, it should be obtained an IP address automatically. Same goes for the DNS, automatically will create it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the following IP address. So I signed 192.168.1.108, default mask 255.255, then the default gateway, which is the router 192.168.1.3, Preferred DNS 192.168.1.3. Again, I changed the three. Originally was a one. So just, you can close that once you're done. Will automatically set the new IP address. If you have multiple computers, another computer has the same address. It's gonna give you an error saying there's duplicates addresses on the network. All right, so we got that out the way. So now we're gonna need to check it. Over here, I have a site, canyouseeme.org. What you're gonna do is 7898. I wanna see if that port's open outside of my network. Success, look at that. So that's great. I could go anywhere on my laptop when I'm on the road and I could just log into the server and I could download a file or I could upload a certain file to it. Works pretty good. But you know what? Let's just, let's just check it out. Using my IP address, put it there. Put the port, connect, successful, it connected using my IP address. There you go, guys. Now you can just automatically just send the file. So if I wanted to send this folder back up, I could just drag it right here. And guess what? Look, it's automatically transferring. Now, one thing I have to mention to you guys, some of you might have router slash cable modem all bundled into one. And in those cases, you're not going to have access to the internal settings of the router. You're going to have to call your ISP and find out if they could do it for you. I've seen that happen. And in most cases, they'll help you out. They'll open the, the port for you. They're going to ask you why you need the port open. And you just tell them what you're going to do. But anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. This is Ray. If you have any questions, post in the bottom. Rate the video. And I'm out of here. Later, guys.